I'm going to share with you the absolute most alarming objective that Project 2025 has for America. Everything you've heard and seen about Project 2025 thus far, don't compare to what I'm going to show you about what they have planned for this country. Stay with me. Hello, everybody. I am attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. Each and every week, we bring you at least one legal analysis of some trending story regarding politics, policies, personalities, and pop culture to empower you with the information you need to defy an unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. If that interests you, please go ahead and like, share, subscribe, comment, and click the bell so you'll get notified every time we upload one of these powerful and informative videos. All right, so like I told you in the opener, what I'm going to share with you today is the most alarming objective of Project 2025. I promise you that. All right, before we get into it, I encourage you to go to Amazon and grab a copy of my book if you have a young boy in a public school. This book will help you identify and respond to the many ways that public schools mistreat African-American male students. Also, we created a program called BARS. BARS stand for Black America Reading Strongly. And the purpose of BARS is to help young black male students increase their reading level because the numbers show, the statistics show us that young black boys are not reading at grade level, the majority of them. So we created this summer reading program to help young boys get their reading scores up where they should be. If you're interested, just simply go to our website at LLJP.org. That is the Lazarus Law and Justice Project.org or simply LLJP.org. Hey everyone, I am attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. Recently, I took a look at our analytics and I noticed something shocking. Many of you watch our videos and I believe you enjoy them, but you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? Again, I was shocked because I know our content is empowering and informative. Plus, our 2024 goal is to have 150,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Please help us by hitting that subscribe button, especially you young folks. We particularly want to increase our number of young subscribers. Thanks for all your continued support. We appreciate it very much. Now, let me also say thank you so much. We have reached 100,000 subscribers, and that is all because of you. Every time you liked, every time you shared, every time you commented, you subscribers, you all made it happen, and we are greatly, greatly appreciative. Now, we're going to do a special broadcast where we do a giveaway and, and really show you how much we appreciate your support for the Defiant Lawyers YouTube channel. We are deeply appreciative because it enables us to get out this message to even more people. Thanks again. All right, so the most alarming objective, let's go to another screen. The most alarming objective of Project 2025 for America. And here it is. The most alarming and dangerous objective of Project 2025 is remaking or reshaping America into a fascist autocracy with Trump as the autocrat or the dictator. That is the most alarming. All the many other things that Project 2025 talks about in that Mandate for Leadership over a 900-page book, those things, yes, are very concerning. I've done a couple of videos on those things. But all of that pales in comparison to the fact that these folks want to reshape, totally remake our country 
into a fascist country and then give all this power to Donald Trump to do as he pleases. That is an alarming objective. And I wanted to share with you up front what that's all about. Now, this is going to be a longer video. All right. I got to go through a lot. You know, I'm an attorney, so I'm going to prove my case. That was my opening statement. My opening statement, again, is the most alarming objective of Project 2025 is the fact that these folks want to remake and reshape our country into a fascist country and then give Trump the reins of this country. That's my opening statement. I'm going to prove it. All right. But again, this video is longer and some of you have short attention spans. So I just gave you what the video is about. Uh, for those of you who want to learn why I say this and what we can do about it, you stay with me throughout the rest of this video. Okay. All right. Let's move it. This is what we do not want, but this is what they're planning. A nation that Trump is over as an autocrat, as even perhaps a dictator, and the reins of government are in his power, especially federal agencies. It is alarming for any person, but especially for a man like Donald Trump, whose more character is much lacking. And I'm going to show you the one more thing they need to happen in order for Trump to become an autocrat, perhaps even a dictator for this country. There's just one thing that Project 2025 lacks. Now, I did a video on this about three months ago, and I laid out what those conditions are. And I'm going to show you in this video what needs to happen in order for Trump to become an autocrat or a dictator of this country. It's, it's, it was at one point unfathomable. I mean, you just couldn't imagine it happening. But we're flatly looking at it right now. It's facing us. It, it's looking us in the face. It is, it is right in front of us. Again, go back and listen to the video that I did where I said that Trump is closer to being a dictator than ever. I did it about three months ago. I laid out what conditions needed to be met, and all of those conditions have been met except for one. Now, before we look at what those conditions are, let us look here. And let me give you a simple definition of what is a fascist autocracy. Project 2025, SCOTUS, MAGA, and the GOP want to establish a white male-dominated fascist autocracy with Trump as the autocrat. Fascism is a nationalist movement, and an autocracy is a government in which one person, the autocrat, possesses unlimited power, Examples include Russia, China, Iran, and etc. It is no surprise that Trump greatly admires Xi of China and Putin of Russia. Trump admires those people because he wants to be one of them. And this country is close to making him one of those. I can't, again, I couldn't fathom this just six months ago or a year ago, I'm, you know, I knew it could happen. But to be sure, even Republicans, the GOP would not want that. But we're there. We're very close to it. Okay? Now, what are those conditions? There are three of those. Those conditions are, as I predicted three months ago in a previous video, First, this immunity case was with the D.C. Circuit, and they ruled against him. I said in that video, if the D.C. Circuit ruled against Trump on this immunity case, right, the Jack Smith case, then that would be one of the conditions that had been met. And then I said, SCOTUS then had to accept Trump's appeal, which they should have never accepted it, because the D.C. Circuit got it right. So whether they would accept the, the appeal was questionable. But because there are six conservatives on the court, 
who love Trump and what he does, they accepted it as I expected they would. And they did the unthinkable. They gave the man absolute immunity. That was the second condition. First condition, the D.C. Circuit ruled against him. The second condition was that SCOTUS would accept his appeal and grant him absolute immunity. SCOTUS went further, however. SCOTUS not only gave him absolute immunity, but SCOTUS also weakened federal agencies when they overruled the Chevron case that I've already explained to you. They essentially got rid of what's called the Chevron deference. And in so doing, weakening federal agencies and giving that power to Trump. So we check off those three things. The only thing that is remaining, the only thing that keeps us from an autocracy, from fascism, is Trump getting reelected. Now, let me look you square in your eyes and say that we cannot allow that to happen. We must vote. We must take others to the polls. We cannot let that happen. You've heard me say, and I'll continue to say, I say, I say it even more forcefully, actually. I don't care if Joe Biden was rolled into the um, convention that the Democrats are going to have on a stretcher with tubes hanging out of him. I would vote for him and I would encourage you to vote for him because him in that condition is better than this country embracing fascism and making Trump or anybody an autocrat or a dictator of our nation. Now, I'm not fear-mongering. We see and hear these people planning to do this. They are not shy about this. They don't hide this. This is not something that is written and kept in some secret vault. They have been publicizing this. Trump has said this repeatedly on the campaign trail. I'm going to show you. So Project 2025 is no secret to anyone. And thankfully, people are now beginning to read Project 2025. I did a video on Project 2025 seven months ago, over seven months ago. But I'm grateful that folks are beginning to get up to speed on Project 2025. So this is no secret. This is not fear-mongering. I'm merely reporting or sharing with you what they have already said. All right? Now, and just to show you Trump's mentality, we all remember Liz Cheney, a former Republican congresswoman from Wyoming, I think. She was one of two Republicans who sat on the January 6th commission and found that Trump broke laws and inspired an insurrection. For that, she has become an arch enemy to Trump. And that's just the type of thing an autocrat, a dictator would do. So to go at their uh, critics. And that's what he has actually said. You see the pictures of her here. And one of them has a bull's eye on it. And yes, Trump has a bull's eye on Liz Cheney. And then he put on his social media platform, look at how crazy this is. Elizabeth Lynn Cheney is guilty of treason. Liz Cheney did nothing to our country. What is he talking about? Yet he sees himself as our country. I mean, that's an autocratic mindset. That's a dictatorship mindset to see himself as the country. If you do something to him, in his mind, you're doing it to the country. I mean, that is really sick, folks. And then he wrote down there, if you want a televised military tribunal, he wants to have her tried on TV, live TV, in a military tribunal 
And guess what? If he gets reelected, he can do it. He'll be able to do it. He could do any number of things to Liz Cheney with this absolute immunity case now. Having given presidents absolute immunity, SCOTUS has essentially unleashed him to do whatever he want to do with his political opponents or people that he has gripes with. And Liz Cheney apparently is on the top of his list. This is not America. This is more important than the price of a loaf of bread. This is more important than the price of, of eggs and milk. This, this is the most important thing facing our country right now. It is not inflation. That is not the most important thing that we're facing right now. It is stopping this man from becoming the president again with all of his baggage and his anger and his meanness and his now his his unlimited power that was given to him by SCOTUS, who was a part of this conspiracy. They want to apparently see our country become fascist under an autocrat or a dictator, namely Donald Trump. They must want that. Look at these, look at these cases. In a third case, they even found that some of the January 6th folks uh, did not really break the law or the prosecutors should not have used a particular statute. And, you know, I didn't have a whole, I didn't have a big problem with that case, quite frankly, because as a criminal defense attorney, I sometimes believe prosecutors definitely overreach. And um, even uh, Justice Jackson, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, agreed with the majority on that case. And I did too, even before I read her dissent. I thought, okay, this seems right because I know prosecutors can overreach. And that case found that that's exactly what they did. All right. So anyway, this is what he has planned for Liz Cheney. This is, again, just 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 sick. There's no other way to look at it. Now, we also know that Trump is out there denying that he knows anything about Project 2025. Although all you have to do is open the manual and you will see that former Trump officials wrote the manual. I found these 12, including Ben Carson, Ken Cuccinelli. He was, I think, over Homeland Security for a while. Christopher Miller, who was over the Department of Defense. Stephen Moore, who's an economist. These people were a, a part of the Trump administration or advisors to the Trump administration. Yet Trump says he didn't know what was going on with Project 2025, didn't know who's behind it and all that. And here his HUD secretary wrote a chapter in it. And it's a crazy chapter, by the way. It's a crazy chapter. Crazy. I'll probably be doing at least one more video on Project 2025 and show you some more of this craziness in Project 2025. But if you need a more proof, here is Trump shaking the hand of Kevin Roberts who's president of the Heritage Foundation. So he absolutely knows what this is all about and who's behind it. But to be expected, he lied. He lied. And it's a very easy lie to disprove. But I guess he figures not everyone is going to try to disprove the lie. And so he just tells lies. I don't know that Trump can help himself from doing that. All right, now, so yes, the absolute immunity case and the Chevron deference case are two cases that really unleashed Donald Trump. I mean, anyone who has absolute immunity from criminal prosecution is above the law and can do whatever he or she wants, including murdering people, killing people, and just saying it was my, it was a part of my official duty. And ultimately, the, the case would end up in front of the six people who said he had absolute immunity in the first place. So he's literally above the law. Now give that man power, okay? Put him back in the White House, and you are making 
one of the most foolish decisions ever made in human history, certainly American history. I believe George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, James Madison, I believe even those folks would be alarmed at what SCOTUS gave Trump. I do. It is that crazy. And then giving him the ability to fire the folks who run these federal agencies and let him put in his henchmen. It's just crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's what conservatives have salivated over for many, many years. They're finally getting exactly what they want. They got those six folks on the court who is rubber stamping everything they do. Because as I explained in my last video, they're all brothers and compatriots and comrades in the fight for remaking and reshaping our nation. And as I said in my previous video, why, if you want a motive, the motive is they want to protect white supremacy. And so they will establish an autocracy or dictatorship so long as it protects white supremacy, white male supremacy at that. All right, let's go back to our screen. So here's just some of the wording which shows you how anxious they are to establish fascism and and an autocracy and make uh, Trump this you know this strong man basically. Listen at this. In its opening words, Article Two of the U.S. Constitution makes it abundantly clear that quote the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. <clears throat> Close quote. That enormous power is not vested in departments or agencies, in staff or administrative bodies, in non-governmental organizations or other equities and interests close to the government. The president must set and enforce a plan for the executive branch. Sadly, however, a president today assumes office to find a sprawling federal bureaucracy that all too often is carrying out its own policy plans and preferences of, worse yet, the policy plans and preferences of a radical, supposedly, quote, woke, close quote, faction of the country. Now, that bureaucracy, and we all have dealt with bureaucracy in our own lives, right, in our own businesses and professions, and we know bureaucracies can become burdensome, and, you know, the red tape just makes it horrible at times. But there is the need for some regulation. That's what they're trying to get rid of, as I explained in my last video. They're trying to get rid of any type of regulation. So what? So Trump can have this power and corporations, right? And white supremacists to do what they want. So Congress gave federal agencies the power and authority to carry out the laws that Congress passed, right? So that is the way our country has functioned. But that gets in the way of Trump's autocracy. That gets in the way of Trump's dictatorship. That gets in the way of fascism. So they got rid of it. Let's keep reading. The modern conservative president's task is to limit, control, and direct the executive branch on behalf of the American people. This challenge is created and exacerbated by factors like Congress's decades-long tendency to delegate its lawmaking power to agency bureaucracies. That's not true. Congress still enacts the laws, but the agencies need the ability to promulgate regulations so that they can govern the responsibility that Congress has taxed them with. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Not Trump and his political pointees making these decisions in the interests of Trump or in the interests of corporations. That is crazy. This goes on to say that protects so-called expert authorities from scrutiny 
the presumed inability to hold career civil servants accountable for their performance and the increasing reality that many agencies are not only too big and powerful, but also increasingly weaponized against the public in a president who is elected by the people and empowered by the Constitution to govern. Well, the people need those regulations in place, oftentimes, to protect the people, to prevent Trump and corporations from dumping toxic materials in people's water or um, eliminating unions that are there to give working people some, some power in the workplace or what gutting OSHA, for example, which protects folks uh, from getting injured needlessly in the workplace. I mean, with Trump, with all of this power, he can he can just basically gut all of these regulations, which are there to protect people. And sometimes they get in the way. Yes, sometimes the bureaucracy is is just hard to deal with, but. Some of it is good. Some of it is needed. And SCOTUS basically got rid of pretty much all of it. Now, let's talk more about this fascism, this autocracy that Trump wants to put in place along with Project 2025, SCOTUS, and that whole crowd. So I'm going to read some language from a New York Times article that was published Back almost a year ago, July 18th, 2023. This has been on the radar screen for a long time. The name of this this article, the title, Trump and Allies Forge Plans to Increase Presidential Power in 2025. Do you understand what that means? That is, they want to centralize the power of the federal government in the president's hands, namely in Donald Trump's hands so that he can pick up the phone. I mean, they can do this already, but but people typically don't do that. Presidents typically try to stay out of, you know, the affairs of, for example, the Department of Justice. But Trump now pick up the phone and say, go arrest him, go arrest her, go lock her up, go put this one in jail. Well, we gotta give him a day in court? No, no day in court, put him in jail. Period. Just put him in jail. Or do this or whatever. I have immunity. There's nothing no no one can do to, to me. Nothing. And I, I you know, he'll, he'll have the kind of people around him who will not even question him. You did have some folks in his first administration who said, no, that's not legal. Like Bill Barr. And um, James Comey and Mark Asper and others, many others, but not this time. He will get those who are loyal and who are willing to go to prison like many others have done already. This is clear what, what we're facing. And the one thing that can stop it is to ensure that he doesn't get Reelected. Now, I'm not too certain, to be honest with you, that if he doesn't get reelected, I'm not too certain that his supporters will not pull out guns and say, we're taking over. I, I think we're in that sort of day. But anyway, let's stick with this New York Times article for now. Okay, it says, Donald J. Trump and his allies are planning a sweeping expansion of presidential power over the machinery of government if voters return him to the White House in 2025, reshaping the structure of the executive branch to concentrate far greater authority directly in his hands. Their plans... Well, let's not gloss over that. To give greater authority directly in his hands. This is not new. They have been planning this for quite a while. Quite a while. 
And so anyone who says this is fear mongering is not abreast of what's going on or they're just trolling. Their plans to centralize more power in the Oval Office stretch far beyond the former president's recent remarks that he would order a criminal investigation into his political rival, President Biden, signaling his intent to end the post-Watergate norm of Justice Department independence from White House political control. Well, again, SCOTUS has now weakened those agencies, given him absolute immunity. This man has a proverbial machine gun in his hand and can use it wherever he wants to use it if he's reelected. That's where you and I come in. Mr. Trump and his associates have a broader goal to alter the balance of power by increasing the president's authority over every part of the federal government that now operates by either law or tradition with any measure of independence from political interference by the White House, according to a review of his campaign policy proposals and interviews with people close to him. That's why that goal or objective of Project 2025 is the most alarming. And we saw, we saw dictatorial and autocratic behavior from Trump in his first administration. He had no respect for our institutions. You remember that? You remember how he cozed it up next to Putin and would even dispute oftentimes our intelligence agencies? I mean, it had people wondering, is he a Russian agent? Does Russia have something on him? And here recently, Putin has come out in support of Trump saying that he would end the war in Ukraine immediately. Putin said, yeah, that sounds pretty good, depending on what he says. But yes, that sounds pretty good. Well, we know Trump would offer a pro-Russia plan if he gets back in office, something that would hurt Ukraine. That is autocratic behavior. Mr. Trump intends to bring independent agencies like the Federal Communications Commission, which makes and enforces rules for television and Internet companies, and the Federal Trade Commission, which enforces various antitrust and other consumer protection rules against businesses under direct presidential control. I mean, this blows my mind. And I want you to hear this close. The strategy in talking openly about such, quote, paradigm shifting ideas, close quote, before the election, Mr. Vault said, is to plant a flag, both to shift the debate and to later be able to claim a mandate. He said he was delighted to see few of Mr. Trump's Republican primary rivals defend the norm of Justice Department independence after the former president openly attacked it. In other words, if he is reelected and this information is all over the place, Project 2025, and, you know, he now talks a lot about his Agenda 47. It's, it's no different. We're going to see that in just a moment. It's no different. None. Then Project 2025, just in different words, the goals are the same. But if he's reelected with all this information in the public sphere like this, they're going to say the American people understood exactly what we were doing. They reelected us. Therefore, they have given us a mandate and a stamp of approval to set up this, this fascist autocracy and let Mr. Trump be the strong man over it. We can't do that, people. The agenda being pursued has deep roots in the decades-long effort by conservative legal thinkers to undercut what has become known as the administrative state, agencies that enact reg regulations aimed at keeping the air and water clean and food, drugs, and consumer products safe, but that cut into business profits. As I told you in my last video, that's much of what this is about. The legal theory rejects the ideal that the government is composed of three separate branches with overlapping powers to check and balance each other. Instead, the theory's adherents argue that Article II of the Constitution gives the president complete control of the executive branch so Congress cannot empower agency heads 
to make decisions or restrict the president's ability to fire them. Reagan administration lawyers developed the theory as they sought to advance a deregulatory agenda. So again, make Trump a strong man. Give him carte blanche power. Now I want to introduce you to a great book, How Fascism Works, The Politics of Us and Them by Jason Stanley. Dr. Stanley says, fascist movements have been draining, and, and, and I think we should read this, and you should read it along with me. Go buy the book. It's a great book. I think we should read it because we're not used to fascism here in this country. We are a democratic republic. We are a democracy. And we're not used to autocracy and all of that. We are used to the, the ethnic nationalist stuff because this is America. We are used to that. We've dealt with nationalism. We've dealt with racism, systemic racism. But this autocracy thing, that is something we've not dealt with. So we need to familiarize ourselves with what fascism is. And, and, and as you read books like this, this is a great book, you will notice similarities in Trump's behavior and his henchmen and women with those who have tried to um, impose fascism in the past, including some right here in this country, especially back during the 30s and the 40s of this nation. All right, so fascist movements have been draining swamps for generations. All right, he's using that term sort of sarcastically because that's what you always hear Republicans talking about, draining the swamp. He goes on to explain how that sort of thing is is propagandize to create a fascist nation. He goes on to say, publicizing false charges of corruption while engaging in corrupt practices is typical of fascist politics and anti-corruption campaigns are frequently at the heart of fascist political movements. Fascist politicians characteristically decry corruption in the state they seek to take over, which is bizarre given that fascist politicians themselves are invariably vastly more corrupt than those they seek to supplant or defeat. Now, isn't that just like Trump? He is always calling someone else corrupt when we see all the time how corrupt he is. Or he's always calling some or one of our institutions corrupt because it's trying to hold him accountable or what have you. So he uses that label of corruption to fire up his base, to fire up his cult, if you will. And then they go after that institution, again, which further promotes him to the place that he's ultimately trying to get. The undemocratic intent behind fascist propaganda is key. Watch this. Fascist states focus on dismantling the rule of law with the goal of replacing it with the dictates of individual rulers as party bosses. Well, SCOTUS helped with that big time when it gave Trump absolute immunity, which essentially put him above the rule of law. So Professor Stanley here says that the rule of law stands in the way of fascism. So the person who is trying or the people trying to impose fascism will always try to do away with the rule of law. A nation that prides itself on being a nation of laws, not men. Well, we saw that turn upside down with that absolute immunity case. He goes on to say it is, it is standard in fascist politics for harsh criticisms of an independent judiciary to occur in the form of accusations of bias, a kind of corruption, critiques that are then used to replace independent judges with ones who will cynically employ the law as a means to protect the interests of the ruling party. That's court packing, and that's what we see happening. And it is something, I'm an attorney, it is something when you walk into a courtroom 
and you're dealing with someone who has a bias, a judge who has a bias or who's an ideologue, and the law doesn't matter. Only the judge's ideological bent or bias or prejudice. That is a horrible place to be in when you're fighting for your client and you got a judge like that. The only thing you can try to do is get the judge recused, right? Which is hard to do. In the name of rooting out corruption and supposed bias, fascist politicians attack and diminish the institutions that might otherwise check their power. In Book 8 of Plato's Republic, Socrates argues that people are not naturally led to self-governance, but rather seek a strong leader to follow. Democracy, by permitting freedom of speech, opens the door for a demagogue to exploit the people's need for a strong man. The strong man will use this freedom to prey on the people's resentments and fears. Once the strong man sees his power, he will end democracy, replacing it with tyranny. In short, Book 8 of the Republic argues that democracy is a self-undermining system whose very ideas lead to its own demise. We are literally experiencing that as I speak. Fascist ideology then takes advantage of a human tendency to organize society hierarchically, and fascist politicians represent the myths that legitimized their hierarchies as immutable facts. Their principle, listen closely, especially us African-American people, fascism is not good for racial minorities. He goes on to say, for the fascists, the principle of equality is a denial of natural law, which sets certain traditions, those of the more powerful over others. The natural law allegedly places men over women and members of the chosen nation of the fascists over other groupings. Fascists do not like equality because it is opposite of natural law as they want natural law and explain natural law to be. Natural law basically means that the natural law, the way God sort of created things, is for one class or group of people to be over another. And most often, that class or group or ethnicity or race that is supposed to be up top is the white race. And those on the bottom, most especially, is the black race. That's what fascists believe. That's why Hitler killed six million Jews. Because he taught, he propagated that Jews were, according to natural law, inferior and worthy of death. And sadly, Germany bought what Hitler said. We cannot allow that sort of thing to happen in our nation. Now, I'm going to take you to Trump's Agenda 47, and we'll see that it pretty much mirrors what Project 2025 says. All right, so here we go. We're on Trump's website, Agenda 47. And his supporters say, forget Project 2025. Go to Trump's website to see what his Agenda 47 has to say. Well, it's saying the same thing. We read up top. President Trump's plan to dismantle the deep state and return power to the American people. That's the same thing as Project 2025. Let's read a little bit of this. President D Donald J. Trump announced a bold plan to return power back to the American people by cleaning out the deep state, firing rogue bureaucrats and career politicians, and targeting government corruption. The plan will also end the ongoing weaponization of the justice system that targets its political enemies simply because of their political or religious beliefs. That has not happened to Trump, but that's what he's going to do, for sure. President Trump's plan to shatter the deep state and return power to the American people. Quote, I will shatter the deep state and restore government that is controlled by the people. Close quote. 
clean out the deep state. President Trump has announced a 10 point plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption. He just calls it the deep state. Project 2025 calls it the administrative state, but they're all talking about doing the same thing. Shutting down, basically firing a lot of the folks who work in these federal agencies and replacing them with Trump's political appointees, folks who will do anything that he says do and not be like some of the folks in his last administration who would not do everything he said. The crowd that he's bringing will do precisely what he wants them to do. So we're not going to read all of that. I just wanted you to see that this is no different than Project 2025 instead of administrative state, the deep state. And besides, as we already said, SCOTUS is already, already severely weakened federal agencies anyway when they overrule the Chevron deference. All right, so we cannot allow Trump to get reelected. We must work our fingers to the bone to keep him out of the White House because we see that he clearly intends to establish himself as an autocrat and the people around him, they want that as well because it will benefit the corporations. It will allow white supremacists to continue to attack civil rights, to continue taking the country back to a time that was not good for our nation, especially for us African-Americans. It will just create chaos. Just if you think we had chaos the first time in his first administration, we will have it like never before. And I, I'm, I'm praying that our country makes it out of this without bloodshed because I played for you a video by Kevin Roberts the last time where he said that they're taking back their country and we're in, and the country's in the middle of a second revolutionary war. And what does he mean by that? Well, he means that they're fighting for freedom, freedom from progressives, freedom from liberals, freedom from um, wokeism, so that they can get back to doing what they like to do, which is, again, to exercise white male dominance without being encumbered with civil rights laws, with regulations, et cetera. So we got to stand against that, you all. We got to stand against that and do everything we can to prevent Trump from getting reelected. That will be the final condition of him, MAGA, Project 2025, the GOP, from establishing a fascist country with Trump as the autocrat or dictator. All right, thank you for watching this video from start to finish. Please share it, like it, comment on it, help us get the word out that there is nothing more important right now for America than keeping Donald Trump from getting reelected. And as we saw a moment ago, it's real important for us African-Americans as well, because according to fascism, it is the natural law for black folks to be on the bottom and whites to be on the top. I am attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. Thank you for tuning in, and until the next time, peace.